Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Doug with Do Reefing. Just wanted to give you guys an update on the tank. I know I haven't updated you guys in probably about four or five months. Unfortunately, the reason for that is I was in a really bad car accident in July. I'm sorry, January. I have still not healed completely. I am still having issues with my neck and my back. And of course, my tank has suffered because of it. I just wanted to show you guys exactly what's going on with the tank. Unfortunately, there has been, I want to say, quite a few issues with either salinity, temperature, alkalinity. Because at this moment right now, I really don't have the ability to take care of everything, I guess you would say. I'm trying my best to keep everything alive and well. But, I mean, life is life. So, here is the deal. So, I did lose quite a few coal. I want to say I lost about eight in total. Due to an alkaline swing because my calcium reactor regulator decided to go out on me when I was at a point where I kind of wasn't able to go out and even get a new one. So, let's go ahead and go through the corals of which ones died at that point. So as you can see, this one back here, I used to have a really nice acro that I had gotten out of Australia. Unfortunately, it didn't have the chance to actually color up. Which, I mean, it was getting there, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it all the way colored up. This coral right here that you're seeing, the frog skin, if the fish will get out of the way. I've already fed you guys, get out of the way. So this coral right here was actually being stung by an anemone, which I ended up removing the anemone from my tank. The only anemones that I have left is one that I have right here. And there is one hiding completely back there. Which I'm not sure what happened to my blastos, but I'm sure they are just closed up because they want to be. They were out completely earlier. So the other issue with the... Uh, my alkalinity swing that I had. I normally run my alkalinity at about usually it's about 10.5 to about 11, 11 2. Sometimes it just depends on how saturated my my calcium reactor is going at the time. Uh, every once in a while I do like to adjust it if I need fill the corals need a little bit more alk or calcium. But I mean for the massive swing that I did have, because in less than three days I went from, I think it was 10.8 DKH all the way down to 6.92. It took about three days to get there, but corals did not like it one little bit. Unfortunately, the, sorry about that, I almost dropped my phone. The regulator on the calcium reactor did go out, which I wasn't alerted because unfortunately my Wi-Fi went out as well and I was getting a box shipped to me for my new modem. So the other corals that got affected was my Miyagi Tort, which you can see is STNE. It's still alive, but it's STNE. Little no-name green acro back here in the back. It took a hit. Uh, my blueberry fields took a massive hit. That one, it was probably more or less my fault because I actually dropped it. And then I had to kind of pick it up with some tongs because I couldn't reach down the tank. My huge tropical thunder by Riff Raff, Monty, it actually died. Still there, you can still see the edges are still alive. But I do not have hope for this coral to come back. It will probably be scraped up and thrown inside of my calcium reactor when I need it. The other thing that died most of the way was my fox flame. As you can see, it's still white. It's still it's still STNing and RTNing. Still kind of alive, but it's it's gonna go. I already know. So I did save one little piece of it right back here. Which in about mm, two days I'll actually have a full colony. Probably about double the size of that. 
Miyagi tort, which I'll also be getting another colony of that Miyagi tort, just because one of my business partners that I deal with, they are growing it out with me at the same time, and they did not care for it, so I will be getting those. The other coral that took a massive hit was my tricolor Validia. As you can see, it is completely, pretty much dead. I got a little hope for those few little sticks that are still alive. But almost every day it has actually been dying off. So I do not expect that one to stay around. The other thing that died was my clam. So it's kind of funny. So... I mean, I know that you're seeing all these losses, but I mean, I have a lot of coral, which it's not really hurting me too badly. And the fact that I actually have colonies that are on the side with all my other partners that are banking my corals are actually, I'll end up getting them back. That's not a really big deal. What kills me is the fact that I've been having issues with this tank so much. I mean... I've had temperature issues, I've had salinity issues, I have had alkalinity issues. The reason why I had temperature, temperature issues was my wife decided to shut off the AC because she felt like she didn't want it on anymore. Which during the summer I keep my AC running 24-7 just to keep my tank at 78 degrees. I don't blast the AC just where it goes over and it keeps everything happy. I keep it at about 76 everything stays alive and the coral love it well the wife had better plans for it and her plans was shut it off and my tank got all the way up to about 82 degrees within about about two hours that's how about where it got which i mean obviously you know that's gonna really affect the tank so as you can see, even people with beautiful retanks or even people that you've been following, everyone has issues. Everyone will have deaths. It's part of the hobby and it's part of how you learn. Uh, the last tank uh, update I did, I actually had a Fowler retain, a Naso tank, a Clown tank, and a Chocolate tank. Well, the Fowler retain decided it no longer wanted to eat. The one time it did try to eat, it ate a big glob of glue. And as you can see in this tank with all the holes and everything else, there is no getting, there is no way to get a fish out of this tank. So unfortunately by the time I caught him, it was already to the point where he was starving. And that's probably the only reason why I caught him. The clown tank, I've never been able to keep a clown tank in this tank. I noticed that my clown tank wasn't eaten for about four days. Five days I've tried everything to get him to eat he decided that he just did not want to eat he started getting a little weak looking so I gave him away which is a very responsible thing to do if you have something that you cannot keep give it away that way it has a chance to survive um, my chocolate tank my chocolate tank was actually kind of I don't know, maybe he was just a retarded fish or something. But he decided that he actually wanted to sleep right next to the gyre. Not sure why, but he always slept right near the gyre. One night when it was ramping up, it must have sucked him in and he wasn't able to get off of it. So I ended up losing him that way. But as you can see, all my fish are nice. They're all... Nice and fat and healthy. Not sure why some fish don't want to. As you can see, I put my hand up here and they decide they want to eat feed. Which, they've already been fat, they're just fat. Um, so, like I was saying, some fish are just very difficult to keep in the reef tank. My Achilles heel is actually the clown tank. I cannot keep a clown tank. I'm not sure why I can keep very difficult fish. I've kept more titles. I've kept like some of the hardest fish to keep. I mean, even antheists are harder than a clown tame should be. But unfortunately, 
The clown things do not like to live in my tank. Alright guys. This video is going to be coming to an end. I did my 10 minutes worth of rambling. Showed you an update. Happy reefing. Alright. Bye guys.